what's up guys this is Sonny back with another video now you guys been hitting me up over and over uh, giving me a system spec and you guys uh, trying to uh, explain me uh, and uh, you guys asking me which power supply you should use for your build or you already bought a power supply and you don't know if that power supply is good enough for your build so today I'm gonna show you guys what to check when you get a power supply you know for your graphics card or you know for your build let's put it this way you have a i7 uh 6700k uh 16 gigs of ram and you have um you know a gtx uh 1060 okay or a rx 480 so basically um what do you need to check uh so i have two power supply here as you can see i have a corsa cx 500 and then I have the EVJ uh, 430 watt power supply. Okay, both of the power supply 80 plus. So the main thing you need to look at this two things you need to look at when you purchase a power supply for your build. As you guys can see right here, uh, 12. Okay, so that's what we call 12 rel. Okay, as you can see DC output right here, and then you see plus 12 volt right. And right under plus 12 volt, as you can see, uh, max load right here, 34A. So that's what really matters, okay, for your GPU or your CPU. You want to get a power supply with a higher uh, uh, max load under the plus 12 rel. So as you can see right here, okay, 34. If you have anything, anything above maybe uh, 20 and up, it's good, but if, like I say, let's put you say you are building a, uh, you know, Z170 build or a Z270 build, uh, and you have like an i7 processor, you have uh, 16 gigs of RAM, you have a uh, SSD, and you have a, like a um, mechanical hard drive, and also you have a GTX uh, 1060, uh, 1070, or RX 480. Uh, make sure your 12 volt plus at least. Uh, 30 and up. So as you can see, Corsair uh, CX500 is perfectly fine for a build like uh, the Z170 or Z270 build with uh, you know GTX 1060 or a, a 1070 or a RX 480. So make sure, just keep that in mind. And one more thing you want to make sure. So as you guys can see, the total power right here, 500 watt. So don't fall for that every time. So let's put to say you get a, a power supply state like thousand watt, right? So make sure you gotta keep one thing in mind. Just because it says there like thousand watt right there, you are actually not gonna get that thousand watt. So as you can see, maximum maximum uh, combined wattage, right? So as you can see, four hundred and eight watt. So that's what you need to look at. Yes, the power supply you know has like a 500 watt capacity, but what's the combined watt are you getting out of the power supply? So you need to uh, make sure the total, uh, the maximum uh, combined wattage, so as you can see, uh, 408. So let's just jump into the EBGA power supply right here. I have 430 watt. So I know there's a lot of debate. There's some of you, you know, pick EVGA over Corsair, or some of you uh, pick Corsair over EVGA. I personally like EVGA power supply and the reason why I'm gonna you know give you a good reason okay so as you guys can see if I compare both of the power supply right so uh, Corsair CX uh, 500 watt power supply okay as you can see uh, DC output under the 12 rel plus tw uh, 12 as you can see uh, maximum load 34 and that's a 500 watt power supply if you jump into the EVGA 430 watt power supply, as you can see, now remember it's a 430 watt power supply. So as you guys can see, DC output uh, plus 12 volt, and as you can see right under uh, 34A. So a Corsair CX 500 watt power supply comes with, a, uh, you know, 34A the maximum load, and then uh, EVGA uh, 430 watt power supply comes with the same spec. So basically, EVG give you more uh, more power for your money than Corsair. And most of the time, I think Corsair power supply going bad. Not, I'm not saying I'm hating on Corsair. It's just I had a bunch of Corsair power supply, and a couple of them went bad. And I'm using right now 
uh, EVGA uh, Supernova uh, G2 750W power supply and this power supply is running flawlessly. Also, as you guys can see, um, the combined uh, wattage uh, on EVGA 430W uh, power supply same as the Corsair CX 500 power supply. Okay, so 408, okay, and also the output, uh, as you can see, 430. So, EVGA definitely makes better power supply, but this video is not about which brand is better than which one. And I'll also do recommend you guys, when you buy an expensive processor, like, let's say you, say you guys are building a uh, Z270 build and you get yourself a i7 7700K, the KV Lake processor. And you get a GTX 1070 and, you know, you get like 16 gigs of RAM, a good, nice case, nice SSD. But then don't cheap up on the power supply. Go with the brand name power supply. You can go with Cooler Monster, you can go with EVGA, you can go with... Corsair, don't go with CX. I'm using this CX just to show you guys like example that EVGA power supply, you get best bang for your money than Corsair power supply. If you want like a stable, really good power supply from Corsair, you need to spend at least 80, 90 bucks. But again, if you go with EVGA, you will spend less money and you will get a better performance. So, you know. So make sure you go with the brand name power supply and not just a Chinese uh, knockoff power supply because your power supply could burn your system, okay? It could burn your motherboard. It could do a lot of damage, so you don't want to do that. So that should be it, guys. You know, I just want to give you guys quick tips and uh, show you guys because I know you guys have been always asking me uh, which one I should get. And, you know, I know you guys are, you know, I, I was the same as you when I started. Uh, like, like uh, six, seven years back, I was like, oh, I don't know which power supply I should get. And, you know, I used to go in the forum search and stuff. But, you know what? Now you know. Make sure when you get a power supply, DC output, okay, right under plus 12 volt, you want the max load at least higher than 25 and plus. If it's 30 and better, like the one you see right here, 34A, both of them, if you have something with 34A or like at least 28A or even higher is even better. And also just make sure uh, the combined wattage, you know, at least, uh, you know, the one uh, maximum wattage at least 408. Now, the reason I say uh, GTX 1060 recommended power supply, uh, I believe 400 watt and I asked for the same thing, 400 watt. But you don't want to get exactly 400 watt power supply. Let's put it this way. Uh, GTX 1060 400 power supply 400 watt power supply is perfectly fine. So don't just get a 400 watt power supply. If the if the graphic card is recommended power supply 400, get at least a 500 or 550 watt because you are going to put a lot of other stuff. You're going to overclock the CPU. You're going to overclock the GPU. So you want something at least a little bit more headroom so you know you are not gonna uh, you uh, you are not gonna uh. uh burn the power supply or you know what I mean so uh, basically what I mean by burning not burning down the power supply basically what happened when you overclock your CPU and GPU uh, little by little uh, this, the power supply will wear out okay so you will see like a certain like the system will turn off suddenly and then you turn it on and then working perfectly fine then you see like maybe once a week your system will just shut off in the middle of nowhere that's right there, your power supply is dying little by little. Alright guys, so if you guys have any other question, uh, don't forget to leave in the comment below. Also, you guys can ask me a question in Twitter. It's kind of easier for me to answer. Um, Twitter at uh, Natsani7. Also, you guys can follow me on Instagram. And also guys, uh, don't forget to stay tuned for the giveaway coming uh, January 30. I will announce the two winner in Twitter or maybe in YouTube. Uh, that's a bit and stay tuned. Peace.